Um, I want to thank you all for attending the Lowndes County Bird Supper and also give Ms. Lovern and Ms. Barwick and all of their teams the credit that they deserve for planning that event. We had a fantastic turnout, especially being that the General Assembly um, was not in session due to their appropriations meetings. I think we found, and you all did too, that um, we had a tremendous turnout. They stayed longer. Um, we actually got some good conversation on some, some legislation that Hart had already dropped. And we had Cornerstone there representing us um, prior to the approval of the contract as well. So we are looking forward to um, a fantastic event in 2024 and possibly moving back to that first Wednesday in, in February again. That, that does seem to ensure a little better crowd and ensure that they will be in session. Um, Ms. Barwick is still working with the staff at the, the facility there to, to be able to do that. And we'll, we should be able to lock that down in April, so we'll let you all know as soon as we do. Um, yesterday, we hosted Georgia Christian School. Their fifth graders uh, toured the historic courthouse and had a fantastic time. Ms. Jessica Gaines, who works for Ms. Barwick, um, manages those field trips, and uh, that calendar is filling up by the day. Um, the Tourism Authority meeting this morning, the authority took action to move forward with a request for, the, for an expansion of the conference center. Um, and they are going to request some conceptual design funding from the General Assembly. So uh, there was a meeting that occurred, I believe, last week, Mr. Chairman, with the Chairman and the Mayor to discuss that. And then the authority board took action this morning with Commissioner Evans um, to go ahead and move forward. Um, right now, we have about 40,000 square feet under roof at the conference center. Um, we are missing events because we're just not large enough. Commissioner Marshall, you're, you had a large event there recently this past year, and there's certainly a need for another ballroom space so that you would have a big meeting space and then the, the current ballroom space for breakouts and meals and those types of things. So they're looking to get to possibly 100,000 square feet. Um, we don't know yet what that funding source will be. It's not been identified. Don't know that they can get to that. Um, but certainly this would be something that would move forward and be the next step in that conceptual. We believe that from an economic development standpoint, there's probably some state funding to assist with that. If any of you have any questions or you're particularly interested in that project, if you let me know, I'll keep you in the loop as we move forward. Um, also, we have a meeting later this week uh, regarding moving forward on the animal shelter project. On Friday, from 6 to 8.30 at the Rainwater Conference Center, uh, the Chamber has, has partnered with others to host the South Georgia Film Unscripted Roadshow. And you all know that film has become a big industry in Georgia. There's some talk about expanding the opportunity zones related to film. We have our neighbor in Brooks County that, that has the big film initiative there, so they will be a part of this. So I encourage any of you that would like to learn a little more about what's being done in our region with film and what the perspective is across the state with that, um, to come to the business after hours on Friday from 6 to 8.30 at the Rainwater Conference Center. Also, on February the 6th, Lowndes County Fire Rescue will be participating in a safe driving summit at Lowndes High School. This is something that our trauma program at South Georgia Medical Center worked with leadership at Lowndes High School to recruit. They actually bring public safety members in through the driver's aid class and um, talk to those students about safe driving and the importance of all of that. I and mean, the last thing that I have for you this evening, I know that you may have seen some traffic related to the old Quitman Road Bridge. We had a fire recently. Um, I talked to Chief Young. Um, our the fire department came in from the other side, so the bridge being closed um, did not negatively impact their response times, but certainly we understand why those citizens in the area are concerned. Um, as you all know, there's been some um, challenges in the uh, coordination between the railroad and GDOT and what that project would actually look like and what the railroad's requirements were going to be um, for things that span their track. Um, Chad and his staff have done some, some made some calls and, and it seems that we've not gotten verification in writing yet. It seems that they have come to an agreement and that they are moving forward. So um, Chad is, is trying to get more information from GDOT so that we can let you all know and update those citizens in the area as quickly as possible on what the state's timeline would be. Again, remembering that this is now a state project. It started out as a SPLOS project for us back in 2017, and the state pulled it out for a state project. Um, and if it had stayed in SPLOS, we probably would have been done by now. But um, that is something that made our SPLOS dollar go a little further for that particular SPLOS, but now we're, we're waiting on GDOT. So it seems that what has been holding that up for quite some time is now moving forward, and we'll keep you all this week. I, I do have a thank you for that. I, I do have a question on that situation but other situations as well. In that particular case, in the event that the railroad crossing at Owsley is blocked yes. for one reason or another, 
is there a notification system in place so that 911 can let the first responders know that that crossing is blocked? So rather than get there and then have to turn around and then come back, they're able to just go to the other. So there is not an automatic um, notification from the railroad, but what will happen many times is there there are some schedules that you can depend on. So there's there's certain times that they will ask, but a lot of times what will happen is because law enforcement is usually always going to get there first, and they respond to those calls as well. Um, they will usually get ahead of the fire truck, and so we will know. The same thing with EMS. Law enforcement is normally going to always be first on scene. So those first responders to that fire that they come from Clydesdale. Yes. Yes. Yes, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you.